so I guess I can talk about how I made my list. Um, yes. Uh, so what happened was I I started with RTK and because that was the the recommended book um, by the community and. So this RTK method is a very, in a way, it's kind of a very artificial kind of method. It's not how native speakers would study characters naturally. So it's what is called an isolated character study. So that you learn one character at a time, completely out of context. So the RTK what it is, is this guy Hasek, he, he kind of somehow managed to sequence all of the characters in terms of their complexity, in terms of their component parts. So the more, the deeper you go into this list, the more complicated the characters become. Um, but the idea is that you only, want, you, you learn one component part at a time, and then you build on that to other more complex uh, characters and stuff. And so you never kind of, uh, so it's very efficient, right? So this idea of like RTK was kind of really well sold in the kind of self-study community. And so a lot of people started committing to it. They said like, right, great, I'm gonna use this RTK method and I'm gonna learn all these characters separately, one by one, out of context first, and forget about the reading, I'm just gonna learn the, the, how the character, recognize how the character looks, and the key word, a key meaning for that character. Um, but a lot of people didn't really enjoy it, and I, my, from my experience, because I, I didn't do recognition at first, I did production, uh, because that's what the book, how the book suggests you should do it. So you start with the keyword and then you can produce the character, but it's kind of horrible, a horrible experience. And the Hasig's uh, kind of little stories, little mnemonics, are kind of, I mean, sometimes they're really good, but um, other times they're just kind of very abstract sounding, and it's really difficult to kind of... Uh, some, for some people it may work really well, but I really struggled with some of his uh, ex the explanations for his stories. And I kind of started to, I didn't really do uh, much of the, of the list. I did a few of them, and the first few characters, first like 10 characters are the numbers. So I had a problem with that at first. I was like, well, he's not really doing it by complexity. He's doing it by meaning now. He's sequencing them by meaning, which kind of contradicts everything. So it's, it's not really building up from most simple character to most complex character. But technically, I guess, most students who go to formal lessons, the numbers are the first things that you're going to learn. So he's kind of, um, he's, I guess that's why he starts with the numbers, and then he progresses on. And I had problems with his like sequencing, and I shouldn't have, but I just really, I didn't like it. I thought, no, it's not how I imagined. You know, it's like when you read a book, a, sto a, a storybook, and then they make a movie, a film up about it, and when you go and see the, the film, you're like, oh, this isn't, it's, this isn't how I imagined everything would look. Because you read the story and you built up a picture in your head of what the characters and everything would look like. And then when you see the, they'd made a movie out of it and you're kind of sometimes disappointed. I mean, sometimes they make movies even more amazing than you imagined. But sometimes they don't. So Heisig was kind of like the, a disappointing uh, movie uh, movie adaptation of a book for me. <laughs> I'd already had an idea of how the st the the seek my sequence how characters would be sequenced, but not exactly because I didn't really have a list myself. 
another problem I had was the uh, the way he broke the whole book down into lessons and there were basically like something like 55 chapters or 55 lessons all the characters the all of the the first book was a two two thousand so also characters that were broken down into, into like 50 lessons and each lesson had a kind of a mixture of different numbers different amounts of characters in each lesson sometimes it would be like 20 characters other times it would like go up to something like 100 i think i could be wrong about that so they weren't necessarily um, equally broken down and I didn't have a big problem with that but he just very like generically said lesson one, lesson two, lesson three so, but then it was kind of like I, I just basically I mean I didn't get far into the list and I realized yeah I, I'm not, I don't really like this I'm not enjoying it it's very kind of oh where am I going like I could see how he did it. He's trying to get people, he's trying to show people how to make stories up. And for a lot of people, I'm sure it works really well, but I just kind of didn't enjoy it at all. I lost all interest in characters. Um, I was just reading his own little personal stories, which I didn't really think were particularly good all the time. And I just kind of felt like I wanted the fact you know so um, I had a problem with the sequencing I had a problem with the, the, the just really meaningless lessons they'd been divided into I had a problem with the kind of stories he was telling some of them were good though I loved his method the Hasig method um, so he takes all of the component parts and he consistently names them that gives them the same name always and then he has a one key unique keyword for each character and then you just build you just create some kind of basic mnemonic story which helps you to remember what the character means his, so the method is awesome and it was arguably the kind of method that everyone really everyone does kind of naturally at some stage but a lot of people don't realize that this if they just developed this really kind of this method into an actual system that you could use it to learn all of the characters and that was really what he kind of nailed perfectly in his book that kind of that idea and I was so kind of excited when um, I found you know I was convinced that this this method does work but it has pitfalls it has it's not perfect I could see problems with it so what do I do I could just plow through and keep going even though it was a really really horrible experience from very early on unfortunately uh, other people had different experiences they kind of enjoyed it or they got to a certain way and they had no problem with it and it was only through doing a really large number of them after a while that it started to become a chore I feel so they're so fucking lucky that they can do that and they had no problem with it but I had a problem from really early on, probably because I had been thinking about this kind of for a long time. A long time ago I did some Chinese lessons and um, I was thinking, oh, is there some kind of... It would be really nice if there was some kind of sequencing of the characters so I can learn them. I had the idea that you would maybe learn them individually first before you start learning, start reading. But it wasn't, it was a very cloudy idea. You know, looking at everything I could find at the time, I didn't know about RTK back then. And I kind of thought, ah, oh, no, there is no method. There is nothing. So, I, you know, I, so I just kind of gave up. But when I came across RTK many years later, uh, more, more recently, and then I saw how he did it, I was like, that's how you do it. 
but I had my own kind of idea, kind of very, very cloudy idea of how to, how I wanted to learn them sequentially. So, with all of this said, I made the decision I need to stop and I need to correct whatever this big problem I had with RTK was. So that's when I decided I need to make my own fucking list. So I put RTK down and I was looking around. I started I thinking I need to see more lists. And that's when I started to become this like list fanatic. I was like, I need to find different lists. But luckily at the time, I also had discovered this other book which I found in the library uh, called Guide to Everyday Characters or something. Um, it's an old book and it's out of print now, I, as far as I know. You can still buy it on Amazon or wherever. You can still find copies of it and I managed to find one, but I think it's out of print now, which makes it kind of a rare book, which is kind of crazy. And that one also sequences the characters with the same principle of sequencing them kind of in some kind of systematic way where you can go through one at a time and then by the time and it helps you to learn all of the everyday characters. And I was like, oh shit, this book also tries to, to answer that question to deal with that problem. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. But this one, instead of talking about stories, it uses etymology as its basis. So it doesn't make up mnemonics, so to speak. It simply explains the characters. And the first few chapters deals with basic characters. And then the later chapters, which are significantly larger, deals with component, uh, compound characters and progressively more complex characters after that. And it also, and I was like, oh wow! And this really excited me. I kind of fell in love with this book because at the time it answered my question, uh, it answered uh, more of what I had in mind. This is how I wanted to learn them. I wanted to learn the basic characters first, you know, like a big group, and then I would move on to more complex characters later. So I started looking, I started going through this list and this is kind of a basis of how I started to formulate my list, my personal list. Because over time I started, to, I kind of basically stuck with the basic characters and the basic characters they kind of divided them up into little groups based on like themes. So like you've got a little, the first group was a base, like tools, you got axe and sword and all that. And the other one, there's a little, another group was animals, all the char basic characters which mean animals, right? But then slowly over time, so I got through all of these like basic characters and then I was like, man, this is insane. I'm like, this is awesome. This is what I was looking for. So I was basically using that book but using the explanations in Hasig to kind of help me to build up stories. And it was extremely slow at first, uh, but then I, after the basic characters, I got onto the complex characters, and the way the book divides them up is by semantics and phonetics. It kind of goes into that cat those two categories, but what I realized um, I, after a while was that for some reason, dividing them up in that way was really just as messy. It was very messy for me. And for some reason, no matter how much I tried, the phonetic and semantic kind of uh, categorization wasn't working for me. And I was like really like in despair. I was like, oh my God, what, what's going on? It's not working. 
this book is the most awesome book I've found since RTK as and it for some reason it's not doing it for me so I was kind of like at a loss and so I kind of had to kind of find some kind of plan B and what what did I, what happened it was that I at the time I had already digitized GRJC and I'd also went through this insane process of printing out each entry in GRJC on individual like mini sheets of paper, mini kind of flashcards, not flashcards, mini cards so to speak. And I ended up with this massive pile of just these individual sheets of uh, with one character on each sheet. So there was like if there was like two thousand characters in GRJC, so I ended up with like two thousand mini sheets of paper. And I started grabbing all the uh, everyday characters sequences, all the basic characters from that, which was insane. But I somehow did it and started putting him into a little mini group, and then. I started getting, and once I'd done all of that, then I kind of started to sequence them by semantic compounds and complex characters and phonetics, which was insane. <laughs> I went through a really kind of intensively stressful period, and it, w and th this is how I started started to make my own list being unsatisfied with the semantic phonetic side and uh, I was I didn't know what to do so this was the kind of moment where I just started I had these basic characters a pile and I put them into a little mini book and then I had all the others and so this was like the chaos period of my list where I would just put all of the spread all of the characters out on the floor and mixed everything up and it was like a sea of chaos it was horrible and this is kind of the dark ages of my list you know like this is kind of where I went into autopilot mode and I shut off and I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know if it was going to turn into anything successful. As far as I could see, it was just fucking never going to end. And I started looking at the, expl the, D the notes on GRJC that he, st he did. Now, he sequenced them originally by the educational sequence by by school year grade one grade two grade three and i ignored that he says i recommend doing that blah 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 because the traditional method is by doing basic then compound then semantic and phonetic but i don't recommend doing that i recommend just learning them by the educational order because that's based on frequency so he bases list on frequency which is what native speakers do but i ignored that and I started just reading his little entries because I had all each character on individual sheets of paper and I stopped listening to what he said in terms of sequencing them by year, by grade and I started listening to what he had written in his notes and in each, in a lot of the notes, many of, he, of the notes of each character he would sometime he would often reference oh it's like this other character as um please see this character or please see that character he'd have these little mini notes referencing or cross referencing other characters um and so i was kind of like ah oh, that's kind of i was always kind of i was kind of fascinated by that along a what for a while but it was kind of complicated and because they were all out of out of sequence because I had them on individual sheets I would just go through my list find 
the character he was talking about and then just put them together and I would make a little mini pile based on his notes the stuff he was saying in his notes and so this is where it was like I was in autopilot mode and I would just go through each note each kanji character and then I would see if he would make a reference to another character and then I would find that other character and I would put them together and I started making these little mini piles on the floor and I would also based on the component part that he seemed to be kind of talking about I would make a little kind of title for that component so if it was an altar or a shrine I would write altar shrine or if it was a um, a dog or I don't know some other the component name that he was talking about I would write the component name that he would say or as the on top of the and put it on top of the pile and so I started to very slowly get these little mini piles of uh, component names that were kind of building up and so after a while I started ended up with these little mini piles and at this point I'm not learning characters I'm just sifting through very kind of I don't know any other character I know some of the characters I don't know all the characters and I'm just reading his notes and looking talk, seeing him talking about component names and shit and then I got to this stage where I was at the end I had these like big piles these piles small loads and loads of small piles of characters which are kind of grouped together and they all shared component parts and then because I had these titles on terms of El altar and a house or walls or building or something I then made the next revelation revelation and well I was like thinking well why don't I just start taking grouping the component names together into a logical order so um, if like I had a couple of them that were like it started very slowly at first but I had like a couple of piles that were to do with hands and I was like well why don't I just put all the hands together hand components and then there was like a, a whole group of like car of piles of components which were to do with people and so I started to just naturally because it made perfect sense to just put all of the similar component names together into piles and then somehow magically I just kept on doing that because it was such a mess I just wanted to tidy up these uh, uh, these fucking chaotic piles which are all over my fucking room and I eventually ended up with something like 12 major groups of catag of, uh, of components something like that 11 or 12 groups of which very very broadly categorized all of the components so in one group it would be all of the ha different hands and there's a ton of them and and there's another the group which is all people and all in all their different shapes and sizes and then there's another group which are all body parts and there are others which are just the ele which I call the elements and I ended up with this similar kind of grouping that the original everyday characters started with with all the basic characters these little mini kind of categ very broadly broad categorizations and I was like holy shit I kind of stumbled I kind of came up this is this was it I thought I thought this is what's going on and I didn't have any clue at first that it was going to end up like this but I had seen this kind of categorization before with other kind of kanji books that I'd seen like actual Japanese books they categorized them like that but didn't really think much of them I thought didn't think now this isn't going to work but I ended up with this very similar kind of grouping and 
so once I had these very broad categorizations, the, the, the process of uh, shuffling them around just continued and continued. So I thought, well, it makes sense to start with this hand first because it's the most basic hand. And then you can move on to this hand next because it just makes sense. And so I kind of started sequencing the, com the similar components in a certain logical, what I thought were a logical order. So I ended up with these 12 or so major kind of big piles, which I made into mini booklets of uh, groups of characters based on categorizing the components. And that's how I, that's how I did it. After a while, I decided to make a one or two page spread. I started to put it onto a Microsoft uh, uh, document. Well, and so I and then I just I continually shuffling stuff around and labeling components very basically uh, how I saw them at the time and I started to type the list out on a word document and now once I had and that took me that was like the next stage and that each of these stages of making this list took several several months like the physical list was like five months uh, typing the list out was about a month or so. Then after I had this one page spread, two page spread of all the characters, so you can kind of see them all at once, I thought, man, I need something else which kind of shows them a little bit more transparently so you can look a little bit more in detail. So I found this other uh, Excel uh, document online which I think a Japanese person had made where they put into an Excel sheet um, all of the educational characters in these like little mini kind of um, tables and I took that and I adapted it and I resequenced it according to my list and it created these little kind of like cascading little charts, table things, which I made in Excel. After I did that, that took about uh, several months. Then after I did that, I realized, oh, I need to have it like horizontally and vertical. So I had to make it again into like a, and I called those ones, one of them was like a cascading, like a kind of um, a willow tree effect where they kind of hanging down like the matrix thing. And another orientation was where they're more like domino effect, where they're like horizontal from side to side. In Japanese, they say yoko and tate. And so I made that. And then after that, I thought I need to start getting into Anki. So I somehow, after a lot of hard work, which I've already forgotten, managed to get my list into Anki, into an Anki deck. Then I started to try and learn Anki which took several months to learn how to reformat Anki. Anki is like just one big um, word processor in a way. So you can format it using like CSS code. You can teach Anki how to format, uh, format your cards and stuff with layout and stuff. It's a very manual version of a, a word processor to me. Um, and I'm still not an expert on how, on how to use Anki, but I definitely learned a lot. I was going through lots of different decks, trying to take ideas from here and there. Uh, I took inspirations from all over the place. I started with the uh, uh, Matt vs. Japan deck, which was very cool. But I didn't like the fact that I had four characters on with four different fronts. I thought it was very cool, but I just wanted the uh, Kyokasho textbook font to look at because it was the nicest to me so I just wanted to focus on one at a time so I just had that in the middle and I reformatted it to how I liked it I started adding all sorts of shit to it and it's taken forever then after I kind of got my Anki list and I had all of these charts and I had my physical books and everything then is when I started to do my compilation process where I started not using the kind of uh, RTK stories or anything but I would use actual explanations from GRJC and uh, Jongwen.com and the other uh, English Japanese character dictionary 
uh, that use you know the one that uses the skip method and uh, from the everyday characters book and I started to compile them all together digitally and started to copy and paste them into my each Anki card and that's where I'm kind of at the moment in the process so basically I decided to rather than plow forward with a method which I thought had many problems with in order to just push through and completely not enjoy I wanted to enjoy the method I wanted to enjoy it and be interested in it consistently so I decided to stop learning although I have learned a lot and start to make my own list and try to correct all of the things that I had a big problem with with RTK and that's how I ended up with my list where I am at the moment and once I kind of got to the stage where I thought wow this is my list I have a kind of I mean there's the process of shuffling stuff round is going to carry on forever but I decided to stop for the sake of making more progress you know I can shuffle stuff around later it got to the stage now where it's pretty much very close to a what I would consider a perfect sequence but there are still a ton of problems I still have certain issues here and there but I'm, I'm pretty ha I'm pretty fucking happy I'm so happy because I went through such a stressful period and once I got to what I considered a pretty good development in my list I'm so relieved I'm so happy uh, yeah so once I kind of created the list I got to the stage now uh, where, um, where I am where I kind of finished sequencing them for now I started to go back and start comparing to other lists and I thought well shit man if I was able to make it although it was extremely difficult man maybe everyone else has done the same kind of lists so I basically become, became this kind of list fanatic where I would be going out and looking at other lists and other sequences I started with the RT I went back to the RTK and I was like very quickly I was like um, sometimes his sequencing is the same because it's based on components right so naturally it's going to be very similar in a lot of ways but then the relationship between from one component to the next is very random and that's where I realized oh yeah the RTK my list is really very different to to his it is is very similar in a lot of ways but the relationship from one component to the next is very different and i i mean i personally feel that my list is much more logical and there are less groups there's like 11 or 12 major groups that very broadly categorize all the components together and because there are less groups, it's much easier for your brain, I feel, to um, conceptualize everything together as a whole. You know, the kind of generalist, very generalist approach. And But, again, that's just nobody else has seen my list. It's just me for now. Uh, so I was comparing other lists together. I was comparing Jongwen.com list, which is also a really awesomely sequenced list. And in a way, Jongwen kind of does sequence kind of closer to, but he has 200 or so charts, 200 or so very broadly categorized tables. And again, so I was like thinking, I love Jongwen.com, but conceptually 200 charts is not easy for your brain to kind of grasp easily but 11 or 12 is you know there are only 11 or 12 months in in the year which everyone can manage to remember that so why can't they remember very 12 11 or 12 very broad categories of characters of component parts yeah. And so throughout the whole process, also, I've been very, very slowly developing the name of my system, my sequencing, my li my of my list. And at first, I didn't know what to call it, and I didn't really care about the name. I just called it, what did I call it? I called it Cascading Kanji or something. 
because of those charts which cascaded and the other one was domino kanji and at first I kind of had that as a name but then after a while I just kind of defaulted to a very generic kanji list and then after for a long time I just had this uh, one page two page spread with kanji list on it and then after a while I started to feel like the significance of this sequence it's not perfect it's not perfect there are lots of uh, things I need to kind of tweak to make it more streamlined so to speak but then I just started putting I just decided to call it the kanji list because I feel like if everyone else is going through a similar process with me they would always start with if they decided to do isolated kanji study they will start with a very basic kanji list they would learn all the kanji and then they would move on to learning to read so everyone at some stage in their learning starts with a kanji list so where they go they go to RTK or they go to Jongwen or they go to uh, kanji damage or whatever all the other sequencing uh, Kodansha kanji learners course they go to any one of those kanji lists as their kanji list of choice to learn from and so after a while I just it made a lot of sense to just keep it at kanji list but call it the kanji list so they would everyone has their own personal personally choose or personally even made kanji list and so it just kind of stuck like that and the more I kind of uh, I I kind of had the title the more the title became it's not fancy title it's just very basic so when yeah so that's how I made what I call now the kanji list and so from the very beginning you have these charts that you can start looking at and exposing yourself to all of the glorious characters arranged by components and all of the components are arranged together into 11 or 12 very broad categories so you could think of um, although it'd be very intense you could think of each category as a month in the year uh, it's very transparent my list you can look at the charts you can see all the charts it gives you lots of interest and excitement to learn the characters and you can have all of the uh, you can consistently see where you're going in the list you know what group you're broad group you're in oh i'm in the first category which is elements so i'm learning sun earth water river i love that idea of that sequencing and it plays back into the old the original book which i had first started learning to recognize the characters which was read japanese today and it plays back into that book really nicely but it's a much more comprehensive list. You only learn about 300 very basic characters, um, give or take, with Re Japanese today. With the kanji list, you learn a much more comprehensive list that will, if you persist with it, will guarantee you to become literate in contemporary Japanese.